Suspension maintenance on an RV is super important. Like ruin your day, cost you a bunch of money, ruin your vacation important. So you need to be aware of this even if you pay somebody else to do this. Suspension maintenance can really be broken down into two major parts. The first and really most important part is the hub assembly and bearings themselves. This is the part that actually connects your wheel to the spindle that lets your RV roll down the road. And this part is really, really important. The other part is the suspension that actually connects your axle or whatever you've got holding your wheels to the RV. This can be things like leaf springs and hangers and equalizers, or it could be something like we have, which is the Moride independent suspension. The hub maintenance part of that will be roughly the same process, regardless of what type of suspension you have, with the exception of the Dexter Easy Lube, which I'm gonna to touch on later in the video. The general rule of thumb for this type of maintenance is every 12,000 miles or 12 months. So this is something you definitely want to be aware of if you're traveling full time or even most of the time in your RV. You can cover that 12,000 miles pretty easily. I like doing this maintenance myself, number one, to save money. It is going to probably run you about $200 per axle to do this. Additionally, you're going to have to take your RV somewhere to have this done and probably drop it off for a while. And that's never convenient while you're traveling or if you're living in your RV. Per usual, we're considering this a how I did it video, not a how to video. Please do your own research on your axles and make sure you know what you're doing before you jump into this. That said, the process really is not that complicated. It just takes time and it's a bit tedious and very messy. What I'm gonna be doing here are three tasks on each axle or each wheel. I guess it's each wheel. We don't really have axles. There's nothing that goes across. These are all independent, but I am going to be greasing the Moride independent suspension itself, the part that actually moves and has a grease zerk fitting for that. That's super easy. I'm also going to be repacking our bearings and I'm gonna kind of cover how I do that here, which is the you know kind of traditional way of pulling the whole wheel, taking everything apart. And I'm also gonna talk a little bit about the Dexter Easy Lube, which, you know, it's a bit controversial, but I've used it before and I have some tips on that. Also, I am changing the brake pads on our Kodiak disc brakes. A quick note on these brake pads and why I'm changing them, because you might have seen our brake issue video not too long ago, where we had a really kind of confusing issue with our brakes. And during that process, I did inspect our brake pads. However, without taking the wheel off, just getting a camera into the little inspection window where you can actually see the brake pads, only the inside brake pad is visible and it was fine. I couldn't see the outside brake pad. However, after getting these off, I saw that the outside brake pad was worn down past the wear indicator. Still had plenty of braking left, but I'm glad I got in there and saw this because I need to replace these. So let's get into what tools I have here for this job. I've got an impact gun. I'm gonna have some notes on this impact gun when I get to that. I'm only using that to just basically get them off and snug them down. Uh, I'm not using it to torque. That can cause real problems. I've got a torque wrench for that, which is right there. That uh, torque wrench is capable of doing the 120 foot pounds that I need. Uh, I got a breaker bar. I've got uh, another torque wrench for the brakes. That one is set to 45 foot pounds. So I've got to have two separate um, two separate wrenches for that because they're just different ranges. I've got a grease gun. I've got a jack. Nitrile gloves, gonna need lots of gloves, gonna need lots of um, shop towels. I've also, of course, got grease seals. Keep them in here until I'm ready for them. And grease, hammer, you're gonna see what that's for. You're gonna see what all this is for. C-clamp for the brakes and just some random tools here. Oh, and of course, I've got this grease packer here to pack the bearings. So let's get started. Basically, this is it's not that complicated. It's basically take everything apart, clean it, put new grease in it, put it all back together. One tool I didn't mention in that list is a work surface. You want to make sure you've got a surface that you can lay stuff down on that's not on the dirt or gravel. I typically use a, a giant piece of cardboard. However, in this instance, we're staying at a friend's house who has a garage there, and I just use the big piece of plywood, which is, of course, also good. Break your lug nuts loose before jacking up the tire, but don't go more than about a half turn or so just to loosen them. You don't want the tire coming off with weight on it. Now that the lug nuts are loose, 
I can jack up the wheel and get the wheel off. Something you should know about this Moride independent suspension is they do have a couple of recommended jack points for getting up just one wheel. However, that jack point is super, super low to the ground. There's not a lot of clearance there like you might have if you're jacking up a normal axle, you know, right by the U-bolt there that connects the axle to the hangers. I found this perfect little like six inch stubby 12 ton jack on Amazon and it worked great for this. I'll have a link down in the description below if you've got an independent suspension because you're gonna want something like this because your truck jack will not get under there if you need to change a tire. Be sure whatever you do to consult your manufacturer's guidelines regarding how to jack up a wheel for your particular instance. I got the wheel jacked up, removed the lugs in the wheel and just set those aside for now. All right, easy peasy wheel off. My next step is to remove the brake caliper. Obviously, I can't get this hub off of here without removing this. So I would have to remove that whether I am changing the brake pads or not. Removing the brake caliper is just two bolts and then it slides right off fairly easily. If you have drum brakes on a standard axle like this, uh, you don't have to worry about that, obviously, because your brakes are inside your drum. Then we'll set that here in a way that there's no pressure on the brake lines. We don't want it hanging from the brake lines. So these particular hubs have a screw on dust cap. A lot of them have the kind that just pop on and those you can kind of just tap off or get a screwdriver behind them uh, to get off. But I like these because they're super easy. You don't have to worry about denting them. And again, it shouldn't be on there that tight either way. Just kind of pops off of here. Get a screwdriver out of there and get started. Pull this off of here. Now this is probably going to come right off. Yep. If it was put on properly, it should not be snug. Now there is a um, washer on here and my Brett bearing. And you're going to see they're going to kind of fall out as I pull this off. Here they are. The, the washer and the bearing. Now I'm going to do something a little bit different here. I am going to put this washer back on and the nut and the reason I'm doing this is to get the rear grease seal off uh, ideally you could pull this thing off and use a grease seal puller but if you put that washer back on and that nut you can also get it off like this now you can see I got my grease seal my bearing and the rest Oh, I forgot one other thing I like to have is a box for all these rags and stuff. Sometimes you'll come across this spring pulling them off this way. This spring is part of the grease seal that was already on there. Now I just wipe everything down, getting most of the grease off. While I do that, I inspect the spindle. You don't want any scoring, pitting, cracks, rust, etc. on this. It should be very, very smooth, especially where the bearings sit. I also do the same inspection on the bearings themselves. I roll them around and look at every single bearing using the same criteria as the spindle. You know, no rust, pitting, cracks. If you see anything like that, you're going to want to replace the bearings if it's on the spindle. I would honestly contact a uh, trailer expert. Next, I clean and inspect the hub. Getting the old grease out is super messy. There's just no way around that. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but get as much of the grease out as you can and just wipe it down in there. I also inspect inside the hub. The main part that really needs to be inspected here is the race, and that's right where the bearings sit. So the bearings themselves, the spindle and the race all need to be clean, free of cracks, any corrosion, anything like that. Of course, there is a race on the other side, on the outer side of the hub, and you want to clean and inspect that also. Now that everything is disassembled, cleaned, and inspected, time to grease it all and put it all back together. The first part of that is to grease these bearings. I prefer uh, to pack them from the inside out with some sort of tool uh, like this. You can see what this does is sandwiches the um, bearing in between here and then there's a hole, a zerk fitting that leads down to a hole that can spit the uh, grease out through the bearing and push all the old grease out, put new grease in. There's also another method that I've used before. It's a little can 
And it's the same kind of idea. You're pushing the bearing down into the grease and it pushes, uh, it forces the grease through the bearing and out. Uh, either one of those is great. Hand packing is great, whatever you want to do. Lots of videos on YouTube about this, but I like this little thing here. Here it comes. I'm just going to take towel, get all the old grease and some new grease out of there. I pack the outer bearing the same way and then I just set those aside for reassembly. Bearings are ready. Now I just need to repack everything. Uh, in case you're wondering, I am using Mobile One Synthetic Grease. It's a high temp bearing grease. Um, I just like synthetic greases. I don't know why. Science? I don't know. You definitely want to make sure you have a grease that is designed for bearings. It has to be a high temp grease. Next, I want to pack some extra grease down into the hub and spread it around. I want to make sure to cover the race thoroughly and then drop that bearing down into place on the race. Before I put the grease seal in, I clean that part where the grease seal goes because I don't want grease in there between the seal and the hub itself. It's supposed to be metal on metal there. Now it's time to put in that new grease seal. If I didn't mention it before, never reuse grease seals. These things are designed to basically be destroyed when you pull them out. Even if you use a seal puller on, you know, don't use the method that I did, you'll probably destroy the seal getting it out. You don't want to reuse these. I like to set the seal in place and just give it a light tap around the edges to kind of get it seated. Then I basically take a piece of two by four and a hammer and hammer it down moving around the seal as I do. The key here is to keep the edges of your two by four across the seal so you're not gonna bang down just one side of it and make it crooked or push it in too far. Feel around your edge here, make sure it's nice and level and even. If you happen to accidentally hammer your seal down further than it's supposed to go, I don't like to leave it like that. I will pull it and put a brand new seal in there. Once the inner side is done, now I just flip the hub over and do the same on the outer side, minus the seal, of course. I slap some grease on the spindle, spread it around, and then it's time to put the hub back on. You want to be careful not to damage your seal as you put this on. Get it nice and even going on there. Hold this bearing as you push it on because it will push out. There we go. Now it's just a matter of putting the washer and nut back on the spindle and snugging it down. Now this nut, you want to turn it and tighten it until it's just snug. You want it snug enough that you can tell it's going to stop and that this isn't going to slide anywhere. And then kind of pick one of your corners. Or at this turn, you want to back it off about a quarter, right about to there. About a quarter turn. Again, you don't want this to be loose, but you don't want it to bind either. You want it to spin freely. Once that's where I want it, now I put the locking clip back in place that prevents the nut from backing off or loosening any more than it already is. You want to make sure this clip goes all the way over the nut and is securely in place. Then you want to replace the dust cap and the hardest part of this job is done. Look at that, fresh grease. Okay, so this is done. The uh, bearing repack is done, the hub is good to go. Now I would, if I weren't doing the brake pads, I would just put the uh, caliper back on, put the bolts in and torque it down. But I'm gonna replace the brake pads. Replacing the brake pads on these disc brakes, since I've already got the caliper already off, is really super easy. And it's essentially just a matter of popping them off, popping new ones on. But if you just pop off old pads and put new pads on, they're gonna be thicker and you're not gonna have as much clearance and you're not gonna be able to get your caliper back over the rotor. So what I do before I pull the old brake pads off is I just pull the one outer brake pad and then I get a C-clamp on the inner brake pad across the caliper and just snug it down. I then open up the bleed valves for the hydraulics and then I tighten that C-clamp down so it pushes that caliper piston back in and away from the center. Uh, once I get that compressed about as much as I think will be necessary, I tighten my bleed valves and then I remove the C-clamp. Then it's just really a simple matter of popping the old brake pads out, popping the new ones in, and putting the caliper back on. Have I mentioned that filming these projects 
the project itself takes easily three to four times as long. And of course, then it's got to be edited and all that stuff. So come on, give a brother a little bit of love here and, and click that thumbs up button. Give it a like, subscribe if you haven't already. And let's finish this job. For these Kodiak brakes, the, uh, the torque specification is 45 foot pounds. I've already got that dialed in here because I've done it three times already. Alrighty. So my next step here is I want to grease the actual um, suspension itself. Uh, now for the independent suspension, it's nice. I've got one Zerk fitting per wheel and it fills the entire moving section, the arm that goes like this or whatever. So that's right up here, I'll show you. Independent suspension, basically the whole thing pivots on this. I've got one Zerk fitting right here to grease the whole thing. There it comes. New grease coming out here. Didn't push a lot of old grease out of this end, but if you look over here, you can see I got quite the, the grease sickle going. Oh, it fell. But my point is you can see the old grease being pushed out by the new grease. The suspension itself is greased. It's kind of nice. There's only one point to grease it. And usually it's pretty good. Uh, all the other ones were pushing grease out both sides. I didn't have to let uh, pressure off like I did this one. This one I dropped it all the way down. So there's no pressure on that. Uh, and it came out just fine. It squeezes out both sides. Now it's just a matter of jacking the suspension back up and putting the tire back on. If I wasn't clear in that last segment, I had actually let the suspension down to take pressure off of that torque bracket. So it made it easier to grease and get grease pushing out both sides. The other wheels didn't need that, just this one for some reason, but you wanna make sure you, your grease goes out both sides. Putting the wheel back on, I have my impact gun on low and I'm only snugging them down. Do not use a high impact gun to torque these things down to some unknown value that's probably higher than it needs to be. That can actually damage your studs and fatigue that metal. And even if you go back and loosen them and then retorque them to the proper values, the damage is already done. And you could be driving down the road and those bolts just shear and the wheel come right off. So be very, very careful when putting your tire on not to over torque these lugs. And you do of course want to use a proper torque wrench and get them torqued down properly. You can see when I'm torquing these down, I'm using kind of a star pattern. There's a guide online and I can never remember exactly what it is, but I like to do a plus and then an X like this. That way you're not torquing them in a circle. You want to kind of go across from each other and, and stagger out your torquing. You also want to come back and retorque them even after you torque them because sometimes torquing this side can loosen this side. So you want to give them a couple of runs to make sure that all of them are torqued properly. You also want to go back and check your torque, you know, maybe on your first stop after your first travel day. I also recommend on your travel days that you check your hub temperatures with a laser interferometer, just a little laser gun, to make sure that your hubs aren't having excessive heat. And you don't really need to worry about exact temperatures or what the temperature is. You just want to compare all of your hubs to make sure that one's not much, much higher than the rest of them. That's the whole process for our Moride independent suspension. But I do want to touch base on stock suspensions with hangers and leaf springs. I want to touch base on drum brakes and also the Dexter Easy Loop system. In our first three years in our 397TH, we had a stock suspension with Dexter axles, and I maintained those also. With the exception of these axles having the Dexter Easy Lube option, which I'm going to talk about, the maintenance on these really isn't any different. You've got a spindle, two bearings, and a seal. It's exactly the same, but there's just no disc brake to be taking off. In regards to greasing the suspension, it's the same idea. You're going to be inserting grease into some moving pivot points. The difference is on the Moride independent suspension, only have one pivot point per wheel. Whereas on our standard axles, we had hangers, equalizers, leaf springs, and everywhere that these connect, there is a wet bolt. And a wet bolt is just a bolt that has a Zerk fitting on the end and you put a Zerk fitting on there and pump grease into it and kind of like the same idea as I did with the independent suspension. I'm pumping grease in there and I kind of want to see it push old grease out and get the new grease in. Also, like I had with that one issue, when I would grease our hangers and things like that on our old system, 
I found that I needed to jack up the trailer and let the axles kind of hang until they were just about to come off the ground. That way there was really no positive or negative pressure on those connection points and they would take grease much easier. Lastly, let's talk about the Dexter Easy Lube. When we first started our journey back in 2017 and I got came around to me to do the, uh, the first maintenance on there, there was a lot of hubbub online and controversy about the Dexter Easy Lube system. Apparently a lot of people were getting grease blown through the seals and into the drum and on the brakes. Obviously you don't want to grease your brakes, that's not a good thing. And of course you want to keep your grease in your hub. If you look at the spindle for the Dexter Easy Lube, you can kind of see how this thing works. You've got a, a Zerk fitting on the tip of the spindle and that goes through a tube and comes out in the back of the hub between the grease seal and the bearing. And the idea here is to be able to gradually shoot grease in there while spinning the wheel and push that grease out through the bearings, through the hub, through the front bearing and out the front. And it's kind of the same idea. You want to see old grease come out until you see new grease and you know you're pretty much done. Some caveats here is you want to be super gentle. If you are you know, using a mechanical or powered device, have it on a very low setting, just be very, very careful. Now, I don't really recommend using this as your primary means. I mean, you're already under there. You've got the wheel off. You have access to the hub. You know, just pull that nut off and pull it off and do it the right way. The other big disadvantage of using the Dexter Easy Loop system is you don't get a chance to actually inspect your, your spindle and your bearings and your races and all of that. And that's really part of the process is to make sure there's no damage in there. If you have any questions or comments about this process, be sure to put them in the comments down below. We don't get to every single comment and question, but we do try to get to most of them. If you want to have a deeper discussion about this topic or really anything RV, travel, life related, join our Discord channel by becoming an Inside Lane member. I'll have a link down below so you could do that if you like. We hope to see you in there and we'll see you in the next video.